Hey guys, Shock here from Shocky Tech, and in today's video, I am going to be sharing the first 25 things to do with your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra as soon as you get your hands on it. This phone is full of deep and rich features, and I want to make sure I maximize your ownership, so let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so before we even dive in, I'm going to show you guys a bonus feature from the get-go. So this feature is going to allow you to add a hidden voice recorder on your lock screen for quick access. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you double tap and turn up the screen, you go to the lock screen, okay? Now here's a clock. When you click that clock, it actually activates a bunch of widgets. Now here, I have a voice recorder widget. If I'm in a meeting or if I'm out there doing something, I want to quickly record something, I can simply double tap on my phone, double tap on the clock, I'm sorry, single tap on the clock and start record to start recording voices surrounding me for whatever reason. Okay, when you're done, you tap on stop, it gets saved. Now, let me show you how to activate this. First, let's go into our phone and you want to go into the settings. You want to go to the lock screen right here and then you want to tap on widgets. And what you are going to see is you're going to see a bunch of options here, okay? And here's a voice recorder. You simply enable this. Let me show you what else happens. If you enable weather, you're going to see additional widgets. You can also reorder these guys. So I can put the voice recorder on the top and weather underneath that. Now let me show you what the lock screen looks like. Tap on the clock to activate the hidden widgets. So that's the voice recorder and that's the weather. So let's go back inside here. One more thing that's important is some people may not see this voice recorder option. Let me show you how to get that real quick. So all you do is you go into the Galaxy Store, go to the app drawer and search for Galaxy Store, which is Samsung's app store. And then simply when you're in the home screen, search for the voice recorder. Voice recorder is going to be right here. Tap on it and simply install the voice recorder. This is Samsung's own voice recorder. Once you have that voice recorder, it is going to activate this feature under the widgets under lock screen. And of course, when you record a voice memo, if you want to access those, you simply go into the voice recorder application right over here and you're going to go into the list and they're going to show up right here. Okay. You can also rename them and customize them. It's going to be up to you. So that's that fantastic feature. All right. So before we continue a quick word from our sponsor, Best Buy, they currently have all the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultras in stock in all colors. And not only do they offer great deals, they also offer a unique benefit. You can order your phone today on bestbuy.com using the links below, and then you can go and pick it up at your local store the same day instead of waiting for it to be shipped. So order today and pick it up today. Best Buy is offering up to a thousand dollars off with qualified activations and also is giving a free hundred dollar gift card. Links and details down below. Let's move on. All right, first let's talk about customization. The first thing you want to do is you want to customize your phone properly to make it yours. So the very first thing that I want to show you guys, there's a couple things here. When you pinch the screen and when you tap on wallpaper and style, what you are able to do is you are able to choose a color palette for your phone. So that option is right here. When you tap on this guy, you have to enable the color palette option. When you enable this, you are going to get all these options as you can see. All right. You can swipe over. You have some wallpaper colors. Basically what happens with the wallpaper colors is it extracts the colors from your existing current wallpaper and gives you a palette to choose from. So in this case, let's go with this one. You can see the theme of the buttons. And even when you pull down the notifications panel here, it is blue. But after I apply this, let's tap on apply. You are going to see that all that is going to change to orange based on the palette that I just chose, as you can see. So that's one thing you can do. Change the color palette based on wallpaper colors and you do get 16 options. Or you can just go to basic colors and pick one that is fit for you. As you can see, you can do things that the phone is picking for you. This is an incredible level of customization. Now, when you pick the basic colors or wallpaper colors, you can also enable this feature that says apply palette to app icons. So normally the app icons will have their own colors, 
But if you choose this option, look at this. Basically, the whole thing is going to look uniform. So now my apps also have that specific theme that is going to reflect throughout the phone. If I go to the settings, you know, if I go in here, it all has that same tone as the color palette. Now, that's one thing. The other thing I'm going to show you guys that's very important has to do with your lock screen. So if I go to my lock screen right now, what I can do is I can press and hold. And when I do that, it's going to ask me to pin, put in my PIN number. When I do that, it actually activates the lock screen customization screen right from here. Now, you have a couple options. On the top, you have the wallpapers. You can tap it, and you can choose your wallpapers. You've got your regular wallpapers, which are very boring. You've got some graphical wallpapers that are so-so. You have some color-based wallpapers that have a unique option to them. So let me show you what that is. If I go to the colors, and if I pick a certain option here for this one, uh, for example, look what happens at the bottom. You have this thing that you can tap, and you can pick any color you want to use that particular theme, that design. And you can also go to the color wheel and pick any color that you want. As if that's not enough, you can also go to the style, and you can change the style of the wallpaper that you want to put in the background. So this is gonna allow you to truly customize that lock screen. Now when you pick your wallpaper and you're ready, you can also tap here and you can maximize the clock. You can change the clock, no clock if you want, different styles as you can see, different sizes as you can see, and all that good stuff. And one of my favorites over here where it says contact information, you can tap this guy and you can now say something like Saki Tech in my case. Tap on done. Now it says Saki Tech at the bottom. And also I can tap these buttons to customize my shortcuts. So right now, this is going to the calendar application. I can change it to calculator application. So when I'm done, I tap on done. All right. And then I'm in the lock screen. Look at that. We have the calculator. Press and hold. Go inside. Over here we have the camera, I can tap that and I can change that to a uh, flashlight. Now you can see that this phone is very large and some, sometimes it's going to be hard to use it with just one hand. So Samsung actually gives you a one-handed mode for that purpose. So if I go to the settings and if I go into the advanced features, over here it says one-handed mode. You can go inside and look at what happens. I can enable this. I can simply swipe down. If you have the swipe down option, you just swipe down like this, and that's going to activate the one-handed mode. Now the whole phone has been minimized to this tiny area, and I can put it anywhere I want. I can put it this way or this way based on which hand you're using, and I can even move this up and down. Okay, I can have it here, or I can have it, let me see, right here. But basically the whole phone has become this tiny screen right here, as you can say, go to the settings, all the settings are right here. It's gonna be so easy to use this with one hand. And even you can change the size of it, okay? So maybe your hands are too small, you want the minimum size, maybe they're a little bit bigger, so you want a slightly larger screen. But the whole phone becomes this small area and the background here just blurs out. And when you're done with the one-handed mode, double tap goes right back to normal. Make sure you double tap in an empty area right here. Tap, double tap, boom, we're back in business. All right, so one more feature I like to set up for eye relief is go to the settings, go to display, and then scroll down just a little bit. Under font size and style, I like to choose bold font. When you do that, all the fonts across the system is going to get bolder. So it's gonna be easier to see and also, if this bright white display is too much for your eyes, you can do two things. Either you can activate Eye Comfort Shield. That's going to give you a nice yellow tint that's going to be easy on the eyes. Or you can simply, if you don't care, go to the dark mode and get less brightness popping in your eyes. Now, another crucial setting that you want to change. This is very important. You want to go to the settings and you want to scroll down a little bit and just go to security and privacy, and there's a very special option here known as Find My Mobile. If you click this guy, 
you are able to activate this feature that allows you to find this phone if it gets lost. So if I click on it, it is gonna be linked to my Samsung account. So if this phone ever gets lost, you are gonna to go to this website here, smartthings.samsung.com, log in with this account, and then you can locate that phone if it ever gets lost. And if you enable this feature, offline finding, you can even, in some cases, are able to locate the phone even if the phone is in fact offline. So that will be a powerful feature. So make sure you play with this feature. It's a very nice security, powerful feature. All right, the next thing you wanna do is go to the settings, all righty, and then scroll all the way down and go to about phone. And you wanna quickly make sure that you give your phone a proper name. So by default, it's gonna look something like this. What you wanna do is tap on edit and then give your phone a name. The important thing with this step is the fact that once you change the name of your phone, first of all, it's gonna be personalized to you, but then if you're doing anything with your phone via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, this is the name that's gonna appear and it's gonna make it easy to recognize the phone. So I'm just gonna say in my case, Saki 23 Ultra. So now, Anytime I connect this to a Bluetooth device or do a Wi-Fi connection or trying to share files with other Samsung users, this is the name that's gonna appear and I know exactly what's going on. So tap that, Saki S23 Ultra. And one more cool thing is, if you have a white phone or a black phone, you're gonna see that image right here, which is pretty cool. So this one happens to be a white slash cream phone and you can see that being reflected on the icon right here. So that's a nice little touch. All right, let's move on. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the home screen. So normally when you wanna to go to your app drawer, you can simply pull up from the screen like this and it goes to the app drawer. Now here's the problem. When you swipe down, it also goes to the app drawer. So that's redundant. I'm gonna show you how to change what happens when you swipe down. So press and hold on the screen, tap on the settings. Go all the way down and look for this option. Swipe down for notification panel. So when I enable this, now when I go out, look at this. When I swipe up, it goes to the app drawer, which is great. But when I swipe down, this time it brings down the notifications panel. I can swipe down one more time and it gives me all my quick toggles right here. And while we are here, when you tap this button here, you are able to make some modifications to the status bar on the top. So if I tap on status bar, look at what I can do here. I can tap on this, for example, and I can disable the battery percentage indicator, which personally I prefer, so I enable that, but I can also tap over here and I can change what notifications will appear on the top over here on the left side. So I can do none and that makes sure this area just remains nice and clean, or you can just show number of notifications. So that's one notification right now, or you can do show me the three most recent notifications. So what's gonna happen is if you have more than one notification, you're gonna see three icons as opposed to just the number three when you just say number of notifications. Or you can just do all, and this is gonna be fully crowded all the way uh, to the punch hole cutout. So that's one thing you can do on the top as well. So let's do that. Let's just do number for now and move on to the next tactic. The next thing I like to do is I like to customize my side key, which is right over here. This is very important because you can customize this key to do a lot of things. By default, when you press this, it turns off the phone. When you press it again, it turns on the phone. But now we can add additional functionality to the side key. Let me show you how to do that. Settings, advanced features, side key, and look at the options. I can double press this side key to take certain actions. The first available action, if I enable this, is if I double tap, it is gonna launch the camera. Most people like that. However, you can also open an application. So I can do the calculator application. So now when I double tap, it is just gonna launch that application that you like to use all the time. But there's one more super cool thing here that you can do. With this option here, instead of opening an application, you can actually activate uh, your flashlight. So if I choose this option, look at what happens. 
double tap flashlight on okay so this is going to be great for nighttime so for example if you are coming to your house and it's dark and you're trying to find that keyhole but you can't see it double tap boom you got that light okay then double tap to turn it off so it's a great little flashlight option you can set with the side key the other thing you can do with the side key is if you press and hold it just launches bixby now i don't use bixby if you want to use it that's great but the other option is you can do this and then when you press and hold it just brings the power menu from where you can turn off restart let me press and hold or do an emergency call as you can see fantastic let's move on other things i like to set up with my phone before i start to use it is to enable double tap to turn off double tap to turn on okay now by default these may be turned off so what you do is you go to your settings and then you go into advanced features and under advanced features you go to motions and gestures and you want to make sure that you double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off the screen is in fact enabled and on top of that i like to enable lift to wake as well so when the phone is turned on Let's say you're doing something and you want to quickly glance at what's going on. Of course, you can double tap to look at it if you want. Or you can just pick it up and that's going to lift to wake. It's going to wake up the screen. You can look at it, put it down and move on and it's going to turn off by itself. So that's the lift to wake feature. And then finally, under these settings, here's one of my favorite features, mute with gestures. So if I'm getting an incoming call, let's say the phone rings right now. I can either tap on the decline or whatever, but if I don't want to tap on decline, I just want to mute the incoming call, I can just grab the phone and put it on the table like this, and that's going to mute that call. In fact, even if you have an alarm, instead of snoozing that alarm, you can mute it just by uh, putting the phone backwards like this. So that's the option uh, with mute with gestures. You can also mute the phone by putting your hand over the screen like this. It's gonna sense your hand and it's gonna mute the phone call or the alarm or any other notification that is screaming at you. Now the next thing has to do with the recent app area. So when I pull up my uh, recent apps, if I bring this up, this area, what's gonna happen is at the bottom, you're gonna see four applications that are suggested to you based on how often you use certain applications. Now, if you don't want this here and you want a cleaner look, you can tap on this button here, go into the settings, and you can actually uh, disable the recommended apps. So now, when I pull this up, I'm not gonna have the recommended apps at the bottom. It gives me a little bit cleaner look as you can see. So that's that. S Pen has a lot of features, but here's one of my favorites. So let's say you wanna go to the calendar application. It has to do with the calendar application. So let me launch the application real quick, calendar, okay? And look at what you can do over here. I can grab my S Pen, and when you're in the calendar, make sure you are in the expanded view like this. Then you tap on the pen icon right here, and you're able to write on the calendar right away as if you were writing on a piece of paper. You can even zoom in so you can see even more detail and write precisely uh, your plans for that exact day. And then you can exit out when you're done. You can change colors from here. As you can see, I can have different colors so I can color code my entries with my own handwriting. And the good thing is when you save this stuff, let's just exit the calendar real quick and go back in there to the calendar application, it is gonna show up there as if it was a paper calendar. And by the way, if you tap this, then you can start to zoom in, all right? And you can start to edit and do whatever. Fantastic feature, love it. Let's move on. Now there's an extremely useful widget that you can use uh, if you press and hold on the screen, and if you tap on widgets, there's two widgets I want you guys to use. The first one is gonna be the smart suggestions. So this is a smart widget. When you grab this and dump it anywhere on the screen, okay, what's gonna happen is tap to turn on the smart widgets. Let's just go like this, tap on okay, go back out. What the phone is gonna do, it is gonna continually suggest apps to you based on your usage and also based on the context. So right now it knows 
these are the apps I've been playing with a lot. So it is recommending them. This is going to be a dynamic app tray. So very useful to have it just in case for quick accessing applications that you use all the time. The other widget you want to dump onto this uh, screen is this one right here, tap on widgets, and that's the battery widget. So if you have uh, additional accessories like your phone, your watch, and your Galaxy Buds, you can track the battery of all those guys right here, okay? Now, in my case, it's not going to show up everything, but it does show me the S23 Ultra's battery, which is the phone itself, shows me the battery level of the S Pen, and if I did have Galaxy Buds active, they would show up right here, as well as my Galaxy Watch. So, nice way uh, to fill your screen with some useful information. The final thing I would add onto the screen is this one right here. Again, pinch the screen or press and hold, go to widgets, all the way down somewhere. Let me look for this thing, maybe not all the way down. In the middle somewhere we have device care. I tap on this guy and I grab one of these guys and I put them on the top. Now I got perfect trio of widgets as you can see. This gives me a snapshot of my current storage use, my current memory use, and if I tap on this button, it actually cleans up and refreshes my phone, optimizes my phone, frees up some memory, and makes my phone run faster. So having these widgets is going to be very nice to have, and you can just hide it on a screen uh, on the side. All right, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your brand new phone has a healthy battery. So what you can do is you can go to your settings, and then you want to scroll down to your battery and device care, and then scroll down just a little bit more, and there's going to be a menu here known as the diagnostics menu. You click on this menu, it's going to take you to the Samsung Members Applications Diagnostics menu. And what you want to do is you want to scroll down and you want to find the battery status diagnostics test. You click on this guy, what it's going to do, it's going to run a quick test and it's going to make sure the brand new battery in your brand new phone is in fact in normal working status. You can see it says normal, life, it's supposed to say good, it gives you the capacity. If you see anything other than normal or good here, then what you want to do is you want to return that phone and get a replacement because if the battery is bad from the very beginning, you're looking at a defective phone. All right, so that's always the first thing I check with my new phones. Now let's move on and talk about the next tactic. Your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is going to have a gorgeous screen. You're going to be watching movies, looking at high resolution photos. So let's set it up so you get the best and most clear image possible. First thing I'm going to show you guys is how to get the best out of video. So go to the settings and then scroll down and find advanced features. Once you find advanced features, you want to scroll down a little bit more and you're going to have this option here that says video brightness. You click on it, you're going to have an option. You have the normal option and the bright option. This is great for watching certain movies at the highest quality. So what you can do is you can actually select the bright option. Once you select the bright option, it's going to allow you to enable that feature for particular applications on your phone. So for example, let's say you're going to watch a movie on HBO Max, you can enable this feature for HBO Max application. You can do it for YouTube application, Crunchyroll. In fact, whatever you install on your phone is going to appear here as long as it is supported to use this great feature. So you choose Bright, and what happens is when you go into any one of those applications to watch a movie, it is going to make sure that the screen temporarily increases the brightness and also makes the colors more vibrant as you watch videos, which is going to give you exceptional quality as you're watching movies or high definition videos. The next thing you want to do is, again, the phone has fantastic stereo speakers. So what you want to do is you want to go to sounds and vibration, okay? You want to scroll down and you want to go to sound quality and effects. Once you go inside here, you want to make sure you enable Dolby Atmos, okay? You can en enable or disable. Now when you go inside, here's where you can pick auto, movie, music, or voice. 
So if you want to use the Dolby Atmos experience, which gives you like a surround sound like experience on your phone, you can enable this setting. Again, it's going to be great for watching movies and even playing games. So from here, you can pick exactly where you want this to apply to, or if you want it to apply to all three settings, you can choose auto and the phone will pick it for you and enable Dolby Atmos as you are doing one of these things, voice, music, movie, whatever. Now, when you go back, you also want to make sure that you enable Dolby Atmos for gaming. And it tells you right here, that's going to get you realistic Dolby Atmos sound automatically when you play, when you launch and play a game. Okay. So fantastic settings. Now going back into the display, one more thing you want to set up for maximum display clarity is going to be when you scroll down, you want to go into the screen resolution and you want to go for high definition WQHD plus. That's going to give you the sharpest resolution. And the good news is the S23 Ultra's battery has significantly improved. So you can actually run your phone on the maximum brightness and still get a solid day off battery after charging your phone. So in the past, I usually kept it right here, but now with the S23 Ultra, I can have it here and not worry about the battery life. Tap and apply and forget about it. You're good to go. Now, one more important thing to set up is gonna be right over here, and that's your brightness settings. So you have an option to set up adaptive brightness. When you set up adaptive brightness based on ambient lighting, whether you're in the house or outside, this dial is going to go up and down automatically to get the perfect brightness for you. In my case, I like to set it up manually. I just disable this and I put this in the middle and then I can tweak it as I please when I'm outside or when I'm inside simply by pulling down the notifications panel twice and just tweaking it right here as necessary. Now, on top of that, if you spend a lot of time outdoors with your phone, you also want to enable this feature known as extra brightness feature. This goes even beyond the maximum brightness and gives you additional brightness for daytime outdoors under sunlight so you can see your phone clearly, even under direct sunlight. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you enable this, you see there was a quick boost in brightness. But if you bring this to maximum brightness, the phone is going to be pretty bright. But if you enable this, it even gives you an additional boost of brightness for even clearer outdoor performance. Okay, just keep that in mind. And again, you don't have to have this enabled all the time. You can just have it disabled and enable it as you see fit. Now, it is not always convenient to come into this menu to enable this. So what you can also do to quickly access this is pull this notifications panel down. If you're on the home screen, pull the notifications panel down and just tap right here and you are able to access extra brightness option right here to get that quick boost anytime you please. So that's fantastic. Let's move on. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to set up the navigation options for your phone. Right now, you can see that I have the gesture navigation options. So if I launch an application or go into my settings and I want to go home, I simply swipe up. It just puts me back home. And if I want to bring up my recent applications, I swipe from the bottom hold and all the recent apps show up right here and I can swipe them away or whatever, as you can see. This is a gesture based navigation. Now, some people prefer to have buttons. So what you can do is you can go to display, you can scroll down, Okay, and you go to navigation bar. Again, these are settings you set and forget so you get the best experience for yourself. So in this case, I can have the buttons. Now I have actual physical buttons here. I don't have to swipe. I just tap and boom, boom, I'm good to go. As you can see, that's home. That's to bring up the recent apps. And this button allows me to go back in any screen that I'm in. So that's the navigation bar. You can choose buttons or swipe gestures. Now with the swipe gestures, if you want to go back, you have to actually swipe back like this, as you can see. Okay. You can also enable a gesture hint. That's this bar over here. But if you don't care about that, you can enable this, disable this, and that gesture hint disappears, giving you even a more totally immersed view 
with no buttons, no gesture hints, you just swipe up and everything just works. The buttons used to work very good for me previously, but the swipe gestures have become much better, so now I actually use them. So that's it, so let's keep it at buttons for the rest of the video so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna go home. Now when it comes to the home screen, there's a couple things you can do here that are very important. Normally you pinch the screen and you go to the settings and you have a whole bunch of home screen settings. What I like to do is I like to set my grid. So we have a home screen grid and an app screen grid. With the home screen grid, I have a five by five. So look at this, tap. What I can basically do is I can have five apps this way and five apps this way. But if you wanna add even more apps onto your home screen, you can do a five by six. Now what I can do is I can have six rows and five columns. So I can even add more applications. I can have one, two, three, four, five, six rows of applications. I like the five by five. It's nice and balanced, and you also get a nice preview. If you want even bigger apps, you can do four by five, and now you, you can fit less, but the apps will look bigger. So five by five is the way to go for me. That's one thing. One more super trick for your home screen is the ability to modify it and customize it. Now look at this. If I wanna move all these applications from one screen to the other, all I do is I press and hold, I tap on select, and I select the ones that I want to move. Let's just say I wanna move these five. Then I press and hold, they get grouped together, and I can just slide it over, dump it right there, and they just sit down as you can see. That was very easy instead of having to do one by one which is a pain in the ass and it takes time. So let me show that one more time. Press, select, selects the one that you wanna use, press and hold, boom. That was super easy. I don't think any other phone other than Samsung phones can do this. Now one more thing that's really gonna enhance your ownership is again to customize your phone. And what I like to do is I like to add powerful video wallpapers on the lock screen, just like the one that you're seeing in the background. So look at this, this is just one example. So if you want to have beautiful video wallpapers, so if you wanna have some gorgeous video wallpapers on your lock screen, what you can do is pinch the screen, tap on themes, okay? And that's gonna take you to the Galaxy Wallpapers store. At the bottom, go to wallpapers, okay? And simply browse and find gorgeous video wallpapers. Some of them are gonna be paid Many of them are free. So what you can do is, for example, if I tap over here and if I say video and search, a bunch of video wallpaper is gonna show up. Here's one example right here. It's a waterfall video wallpaper. You just download and apply. Only thing you wanna look for is at the bottom corner of the actual wallpaper preview screen, it's gonna say video. That way you know it is a video wallpaper. And of course, if it's free, you can just download that for free and you can even preview the wallpaper before you actually download it, okay? It's all gonna be up to you. Once you download these video wallpapers, you pinch the screen, you go to wallpaper and style, you tap on browse my wallpapers and swiping all the way at the bottom, you're gonna see them right here under downloaded. You click on these and you can access your video wallpapers here. Even here at the bottom corner, it's gonna say, uh, video as you can see you can always click on it to quickly preview it to see exactly what it's going to look like on your screen fantastic let's move on now one more thing that i like to do that's very important for me is when i pick a wallpaper let me just go to my wallpapers here let's pick a nice wallpaper uh, let's just say this one the city wallpaper right here i'm going to do it for the home screen only okay i'm going to tap on preview it shows me what it's going to look like i click on done now that's gonna be my home screen wallpaper when I go back. What I like to do is I like to, when I unlock my phone like this, I like to see the wallpaper right away. Many people have it this way. They have this, let's uh, put a widget up here real quick. They have a clock, they have a bunch of applications and the wallpaper is in the, in the background. You can't really see it. And if it's gorgeous, maybe you wanna see it. So what I like to do is I like to create, I like to pinch the screen, create an empty home screen, okay, set the wallpaper, and then pinch the screen again and tap this little home icon on the top. That makes sure 
your home screen is actually the wallpaper. So look, if I were to go to any other screen, when I tap home, it goes back to that home screen. Or if I unlock my phone, by default, it goes to the home screen. Now, if you don't like this, you can always go back here, pinch this, and make this your home, okay? So now when I lock the phone and unlock it, it is gonna go to that, that home screen. So you can have any screen as your main home screen. I like to have it so it points directly to the wallpaper. Now guys, we have come to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below, let me know. For now, have a fantastic day.